check! It's English O'Clock! Ang pag-aaral ng English upang madaling matutunan, bakit hindi natin simplihan? Halika! Manood at makinig sa English Teacher ni Juan! Kung bago ka pa lang sa channel na to, huwag kang matakot! I made learning English easy for you! Please like, comment, and subscribe! At pakishare mo na rin sa iba para marami pang mga Juan na gaya mo ang matuto! Hello there, Grade 7! We are to embark on a new journey towards understanding the Matatag Curriculum. Samahan nyo ko at pag-aralan natin ang unang lesson nyo para sa school year na to. Tara, let's start! Our target learning competency for this video is Analyze literary text as expressions of individual or communal values within. Before we directly proceed to our main topic which is about poetry, let us first talk about the bigger picture which is literature. Literature is any collection of written work, but it is also used more narrowly for writings, specifically considered to be an art form. In recent centuries, the definition has expanded to include oral literature much of which has been transcribed. Literature is also a method of recording, preserving, and transmitting knowledge and entertainment and can also have a social, psychological, spiritual, or political role. Literature basically has four types, also known as literary genres. The genre raises certain expectations in what the reader anticipates will happen within that work. These are the four genre or types of literature. We have drama, poetry, prose fiction, and prose non-fiction. But for quarter one, we will just be focusing on poetry. Proceed na tayo ngayon sa ating main topic which is poetry. Poetry is a type of literature that uses not only words, but also form, patterns of sound, imagery, and figurative language to convey the message. Descriptive words and poetry go hand in hand. As vivid descriptions can bring poetry to life, Painting images and evoking emotions in the reader's mind. Now, talking about painting images in poetry, imagery is a vivid and vibrant form of description that appeals to readers' senses and imagination. How is imagery used in poetry? Imagery allows the reader to clearly see, touch, taste, smell, and hear what is happening, and in some cases, even empathize with a poet or their subject. Here are the seven types of imagery in poetry with corresponding examples. First is visual imagery. In this form of poetic imagery, the poet appeals to the reader's sense of sight by describing something the speaker or narrator of the poem sees. It may include colors, brightness, shapes, sizes, and patterns. To provide readers with visual imagery, poets often use metaphor, simile, or personification in their description. Here is a sample stanza of a poem. Sunset spills its golden paint across the sky's vast canvas sheet. Blushing clouds in hue so faint, where day and night in twilight meet. This stanza provides rich visual imagery, creating a vivid picture of a sunset in the reader's mind. Here's a breakdown of how each line contributes to the visual imagery. 
Sunset spills its golden paint. The word spills evokes a sense of fluid motion as if the sunset is actively spreading across the sky. Golden paint conjures a rich, warm color that is commonly associated with sunsets, making it easy for the reader to visualize the scene. Across the sky's vast canvas sheet. Describing the sky as a vast canvas sheet suggests an immense open space, enhancing the grandeur of the scene. The metaphor of the sky as a canvas reinforces the idea of the sunset as a painting, emphasizing the artistry of the natural world. Blushing clouds in hue so faint. The term blushing clouds personifies the clouds, giving them a delicate, pinkish tint often seen at sunset. Hue so faint indicates soft, gentle colors, suggesting a subtle and beautiful transition in the sky's appearance. Where day and night in twilight meet. This line encapsulates the transition period known as twilight, where the remnants of daylight blend with the encroaching night. The imagery of day and night meeting highlights the changing light and colors in the sky during this time. Together, these lines use descriptive language and metaphor to paint a vivid dynamic picture of a sunset, allowing the reader to visualize the changing colors and the serene beauty of twilight. Next is auditory imagery. This form of poetic imagery appeals to the reader's sense of hearing or sound. It may include music and other pleasant sounds, harsh noises or silence. In addition to describing a sound, the poet might also use sound device like onomatopoeia or words that imitate sounds, so reading the poem aloud recreates the auditory experience. Here is an example. Leaves whisper secrets in the breeze. Soft murmurs through the ancient trees. Birdsong weaves a morning tune. Harmony in nature's croon. The stanza employs auditory imagery to engage the reader's sense of hearing, creating a rich soundscape. Here's how each line contributes. Leaves whisper secrets in the breeze. The word whisper suggests a soft, gentle sound, evoking the subtle rustling of leaves as they move with the breeze. Secrets adds an element of mystery and intimacy to the sound, implying that the leaves are communicating something delicate and personal. Soft murmurs through the ancient trees. Soft murmurs implies a quiet, soothing sound, enhancing the auditory imagery of the leaves' gentle rustling. The phrase ancient trees suggests a deep, timeless quality to the sound, as if these trees have been quietly murmuring for ages. Bird song weaves a morning tune. Bird song directly appeals to the sense of hearing, evoking the melodic and pleasant sounds made by birds. Weaves a morning tune suggests a harmonious, crafted sound that blends seamlessly with the morning ambience, adding to the richness of the auditory experience. Harmony in nature's croon. Harmony emphasizes the pleasing, coordinated nature of the sounds in the environment. Nature's croon likens the natural sounds to a soothing, gentle song or lullaby, reinforcing the idea of a harmonious auditory experience in nature. Overall, these lines use descriptive language to create a vivid auditory experience, allowing the reader to hear the gentle rustling of leaves, the murmuring of trees, and the melodious sounds of birdsong. 
Another type of imagery is gustatory imagery. In this form of poetic imagery, the poet appeals to the reader's sense of taste. By describing something, the speaker or narrator of the poem tastes. It may include sweetness, sourness, saltiness, savoriness, or spiciness. This is especially effective when the poet describes a taste that the reader has experienced before and can recall from sense memory. Here is an example stanza of a poem. Ripe peaches burst with summer sweet. Juice drips down in sticky streams. Honeyed nectar, warm and neat. A taste of sun in golden dreams. This stanza uses gustatory imagery to evoke the sense of taste, creating a vivid experience of enjoying ripe peaches. Here's how each line contributes. Ripe peaches burst with summer sweet. The word burst suggests an explosion of flavor, emphasizing the juiciness and intense sweetness of the peaches. Summer sweet ties the flavor to the season, evoking the characteristic taste of peaches ripened under the summer sun. Juice drips down in sticky streams. Juice drips visualizes the peach's juiciness and the way it flows, hinting a sweet, refreshing taste. Sticky streams conveys the texture and the richness of the peach's juice, adding a tactile element to the gustatory experience. Honeyed nectar, warm and neat. Honeyed nectar suggests a taste that's not only sweet but also smooth and rich, reminiscent of honey's flavor. Warm and neat evokes the filling of the fruit's warmth and the neatness of the taste, contributing to the sensory experience of savoring the peach. A taste of sun in golden dreams. A taste of sun metaphorically ties the peach's flavor to the warmth and brightness of the sun, enhancing the sensory imagery with a sense of warmth and light. Golden dreams suggest a rich, dreamy quality to the taste, reinforcing the idea of a luscious and idyllic flavor experience. Together, these lines use descriptive language to evoke the taste, texture, and sensory pleasure of eating ripe peaches, making the reader almost taste the sweetness and richness described. We also have tactile imagery. In this form of poetic imagery, the poet appeals to the reader's sense of touch. By describing something, the speaker of the poem feels on their body. It may include the feel of temperatures, textures, and other physical sensations. Example, soft velvet petals brush my skin. A rose's touch so smooth and light. Cool morning dews collects within. A gentle kiss from dawn's first light. This stanza employs tactile imagery to evoke the sense of touch, creating a sensory experience of feeling various textures and sensations. Here's how each line contributes. Soft velvet petals brush my skin. The adjective soft describes the delicate and gentle texture of the petals. Velvet conveys a luxurious, smooth, and plush feel, enhancing the tactile quality of the petals. The action, brush my skin, suggests a light, fleeting contact, adding to the sensory experience of feeling the softness. A rose's touch so smooth and light. Smooth reinforces the idea of a soft and even texture emphasizing the gentle feel of the rose. Light indicates a delicate and effortless touch, 
further enhancing the sense of a gentle, tender contact. Cool morning dew collects within. Cool describes the temperature of the dew, adding a refreshing and crisp sensation. Collects within suggests the feeling of moisture gathering, adding a tactile element of wetness. A gentle kiss from dawn's first light. The phrase gentle kiss metaphorically describes the soft, delicate sensation of the early morning light touching the skin. Dawn's first light adds a sense of subtle warmth and a soft touch contributing to the tactile imagery. Overall, these lines use descriptive language to evoke the feeling of touching soft, smooth petals, experiencing cool dew, and the tender sensation of early morning light. Another is olfactory imagery. In this form of poetic imagery, the poet appeals to the reader's sense of smell by describing something the speaker of the poem inhales. It may include pleasant fragrances or off-putting odors. Here is an example stanza of a poem. Lavender fields in twilight's glow, their fragrant breath a calming sigh. Sweet perfume in the breezes flow, a scented lullaby to night sky. The stanza uses olfactory imagery to evoke the sense of smell, creating a vivid sensory experience of the lavender fields. Here's how each line contributes. Lavender fields in twilight's glow. While this line primarily sets the scene and evokes visual imagery, it also hints at the olfactory experience by referencing lavender fields, which are typically associated with a distinct, pleasant scent. Their fragrant breath, a calming sigh. The word fragrant directly addresses the sense of smell, indicating that the lavender fields emit a pleasant aroma. Breath and calming sigh metaphorically describe the scent as something gentle and soothing, enhancing the sensory experience of the fragrance. Sweet perfume in the breezes flow. Sweet perfume highlights the pleasing and aromatic quality of the lavender scent. In the breezes flow suggests that the scent is carried gently by the wind allowing the reader to imagine how the fragrance disperses and mingles with the air. A scented lullaby to night sky. Scented lullaby metaphorically describes the fragrance as something soothing and melodic, suggesting a comforting and relaxing aroma. To night sky implies that the scent fills the evening air further enhancing the olfactory imagery of the lavender's aroma blending with the twilight atmosphere. Overall, these lines use descriptive language to create a vivid olfactory experience, allowing the reader to smell the sweet, calming fragrance of lavender fields as they are carried by the breeze at twilight. We also have Kinesthetic imagery. In this form of poetic imagery, the poet appeals to the reader's sense of motion. It may include the sensation of speeding along in a vehicle, a slow sauntering, or a sudden jolt when stopping. And it may apply to the movement of the poem's speaker or narrator or objects around them. Here is a sample stanza. Waves dance and leap against the shore. Their rhythmic push, a wild embrace. Oceans pulse, a ceaseless roar. Nature's motion, full of grace. The stanza uses kinesthetic imagery to evoke the sense of movement and physical sensation, creating a vivid experience of the ocean's dynamic presence. Here's how each line contributes. 
waves dance and leap against the shore. The verbs dance and leap suggest active, energetic movements, conveying the idea of waves moving with a lively, graceful motion. Against the shore adds a sense of direction and interaction, highlighting the physical impact of the waves meeting the land. Their rhythmic push, a wild embrace. Rhythmic push implies a regular, repeating motion, emphasizing the consistent, driving force of the waves. Wild embrace conveys a sense of intensity and passion in the waves' interaction with the shore, suggesting both a powerful and affectionate movement. Ocean's pulse, a ceaseless roar. Ocean's pulse likens the constant movement of the waves to a heartbeat, emphasizing a continuous rhythmic sensation. Ceaseless roar describes the persistent, powerful sound of the ocean, suggesting a relentless and dynamic energy. Nature's motion full of grace. Nature's motion summarizes the physical activity described earlier reinforcing the idea of a harmonious and fluid movement. Full of grace implies that despite the wildness and power, there is an inherent elegance and smoothness to the ocean's motion. Together, these lines use descriptive language to create a vivid sense of movement, physical sensation, and energy associated with the ocean allowing the reader to almost feel the dynamic and rhythmic nature of the waves. And lastly, organic imagery. In this form of poetic imagery, the poet communicates internal sensations such as fatigue, hunger, and thirst, as well as internal emotions such as fear, love, and despair. Here is a sample stanza of a poem. Heart beats steady, calm and slow. Warmth spreads through a tranquil chest. Breath sinks with the ebb and flow. Peaceful mind in deep, sweet rest. The stanza uses organic imagery to evoke internal sensations and physical states, focusing on the body's natural processes and feelings. Here's how each line contributes. Heart beats steady, calm, and slow. Heartbeat steady describes the consistent and rhythmic nature of the heartbeat, conveying a sense of stability and regularity. Calm and slow further emphasizes a relaxed, controlled pace reflecting a peaceful state of being. Warmth spreads through a tranquil chest. Warmth spreads evokes a physical sensation of heat and comfort moving through the body. Tranquil chest describes the area of the body where this warmth is felt, suggesting a deep sense of calm and relaxation. Breath sinks with the ebb and flow. Breath sinks indicates that breathing is in harmony with another rhythm, suggesting a natural, soothing alignment. Ebb and flow compares the rhythm of breathing to the gentle, alternating motion of waves, enhancing the sense of a smooth, rhythmic process. Peaceful mind in deep, sweet rest. Peaceful mind conveys a state of mental calm and relaxation. Deep sweet rest suggests a profound and pleasant state of sleep or relaxation, emphasizing the overall tranquility and ease. Together, these lines use descriptive language to create a vivid picture of internal sensations related to calmness and relaxation, allowing the reader to experience the steady heartbeat, warmth, rhythmic breathing, and restful state of the body and mind. So did you learn something today? Sure ako na hindi ka na nosebleed? 
if you want more of this video tutorial and learn English in a light speed, huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe at turn on ang notification button para updated ka sa mga bagong lessons. Ako ang teacher mo, ang English teacher ni Juan. Class is